Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Jada Yu Zhang. I'm a Clinical Chemistry and Toxicology Fellow from Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital at USSF. Welcome to this Pro of Laboratory Medicine on Pain Management Opiates. We will go through the introduction of opiates, including opiate family, their biological function, clinical application in pain management, side effects, and the opiate crisis. And then how to detect opiates in clinical laboratory in terms of specimen type, analyze, and methodology. The opiate family is defined by their binding capacity to opiate receptors. There are three subgroups, including natural opiates, semi-synthetic opiates, and fully synthetic opiate. Natural opiates are natural derivatives from opium, like morphine, codeine, and the ben. Their chemical structure are quite similar to each other. The ben is proposed as a marker for purposes use because it was absent in powdered drugs and the urine of a true opiate drug user. Semi-synthetic opiates are substituted derivatives of morphine or codeine, including hydrocodone, hydromorphone, oxycodone, oxymorphone, heroin, buprenorphine, and naloxone. Buprenorphine is a partial agonist, and naloxone is an antagonist, which are used for opiate addiction and overdose treatment, respectively. Some of the semi-synthetic opiates are also metabolized of codeine and morphine, or can metabolize to morphine, for which we can get into details in the following slides. The structure of semi-synthetic opiates are still similar to morphine or codeine, with minor difference highlighted in those circles. Therefore, many semi-synthetic opiates can cross-react in opiate immunoassays, which target the backbone of morphine. However, their cross-reactivity may be lower. For example, oxycodone and oxymorphone are often missed in urine drug screening by opiate immunoassay due to their low reactivity. Unlike a semi-synthetic opiate, fully synthetic opiates are structurally different from morphine. Therefore, they cannot be recognized by opiate immunoassays, even though they can bind to opiate receptors and perform similar functions. Here are a few examples, including fentanyl, methadone, and tramadol. Methadone is a synthetic opiate agonist that eliminates withdrawal syndromes and uh, relieves drug cravings. All the above opiates combine to opiate receptors and produce analgesia and euphoria. Clinically, opiates have been used for pain management. Codeine, morphine, hydrocodone, hydromorphone, oxycodone, and oxymorphone are the most commonly prescribed opiates for pain management in the United States. Naloxone is an antidote to treat opiate overdose. Buprenorphine and methadone are used to treat opiate addiction. They are a key part of long-term opiate agonist therapy. However, opiates do have adverse effects. The opiate-specific toxidrome include central neural system and respiratory depression, bradycardia, hypotension, hypoxemia, coma, and myosis. Moreover, long-term use of opiate, even as prescribed by a doctor, can develop tolerance, physical dependence, and addiction. The illicit usage of opiates has caused the opiate crisis in the United States. From 1999 to 2018, 
almost 450,000 people died from an overdose involve any opiates, including prescription and illicit opiates. In 2018, two out of three drug overdose deaths involve an opiate. The opiate crisis has imposed a significant social and economic burden in the United States. In recent years, fentanyl and synthetic opiates has dominated in the opiate crisis. Clinical labs play essential roles in the pain management and opiate crisis. Two main interesting questions, including checking patient compliance to prescribed opiates and identifying undisclosed recreational drug use. To answer these questions, i.e. to detect opiates, we need to consider specimen type, analyze, and methods. We will look into detail in the following slides. The common specimen, including urine, serum, plasma, saliva, or others, each specimen type has its advantages and limitations. The general role is to examine the earliest specimen if possible. Urine is the most common specimen type for drug screening. Compared to blood, urine usually has a longer detection window, higher concentration for most drugs, less interference, or sample processing. However, it can be tempered intentionally and unintentionally. Therefore, it is important to check the integrity or validity of urine samples. The expected temperature of urine is 90 to 100 degree, and the expected pH is 4.5 to 9. Dilution or adulteration of urine specimens can be detected by monitoring the creatinine concentration, specific gravities, or testing for the presence of oxidants. The metabolism of opiate is complicated, but crucial for test selection and result interpretation. Opiates are metabolized to active or inactive metabolites through demethylation, glucuronidization, deacetylation, hydroxylation, and so on. Both parent drugs and metabolites can be excreted into urine. To choose which drug as an analyze for drug detection, it depends on the metabolism path, the speed, and clinical needs. For most opiates, both parent drugs and primary metabolites are used as analyze for detection. When a patient takes one opiate, both the parent drug and its primary metabolites can be detected. For example, intake of codeine leads to the positive of codeine, the parent drug, and its metabolites, including norcodeine, codeine glucuronide, hydrocodone, morphine, and hydromorphine. On the other hand, when one opiate is detected in urine, it may indicate either the intake of this opiate or intake of other parent opiates, or sometimes contamination during drug production. One common example, the detection of morphine may happen when a patient takes morphine heroin or codeine due to metabolism, or sometimes just due to pharmacological contamination. For some conditions, opiate metabolites rather than parent drugs are used as biomarkers of opiate usage. One condition is to monitor patient compliance with prescribed opiate. Metabolites can exclude the possibility of adding drugs to urine after sample collection. Therefore, it can distinguish real administration from urine adulteration. For example, EDDP is used to monitor patient compliance when prescribed methadone and norbuprenorphine 
for buprenorphine. Another special condition is drugs with rapid metabolism. For example, heroin metabolized to six months with half-life of only two to six minutes, which makes it less likely to detect parent heroin in urine. Six months and morphine are sequential metabolites of heroin. However, morphine is not unique for heroin use, as we mentioned before. Therefore, 6 mm is a unique biomarker indicating heroin use. Here is a list of analyzer and detection window for opiates. Opiate use can be detected by the presence of parent drug or is metabolized in urine within one to four days. For heroin use, the detection window of 6 mm is only 12 to 24 hours. The most common method to detect opiates are immunoassays and mass spectrometry. Immunoassays are methods that use an antigen and antibody reaction to detect the drugs. They are usually rapid, easy for automation, and need less labor and cost. However, they are prone to false positive and false negative, and they can't distinguish among individual opiates. Therefore, immunoassays are routinely used for initial opiate screening, and the positive results are only considered as presumptive positive. Mass spectrometry methods have high sensitivity, high specificity, and multiplex capacity. Due to the high demands of instrument, technique, and cost, Mass spec method we usually use for opiate confirmation. Since opiates are small molecules, competitive immunoassays are applied for opiate detection, including enzyme multiplied immunoassay technique, cloned enzyme donor immunoassay, fluorescent polarization immunoassay, lateral flu immunoassays. The opiate immunoassay targeting the backbone of morphine can detect natural opiates and many semi-synthetic opiates, but not fully synthetic opiates. Moreover, they cannot distinguish between opiates. For fully synthetic opiates and some semi-synthetic opiates, they cannot be well recognized by opiate immunoassay. Specific immunoassay targeting individual opiates should be used. For example, immunoassay for methadone, buprenorphine, oxycodone, oxymorphine, 6 man, and fentanyl are commonly included in urine drug screening list. As you may recall, immunoassay are prone to false positive and false negative. Positive results are only considered as presumptive positive. Sometimes negative results are not consistent with clinical presentation. Moreover, opiate immunoassay are unable to distinguish between individual opiates. Therefore, both positive results and unexplainable negative results needed to be confirmed by mass spec test. Mass spectrometry is a technique that ionizes, separates, and measure the M to charge ratio, M over Z of molecule for chemical identification and quantification. Compared to immunoassay, mass spec identify individual drugs and metabolize by retention time, mass, isotope, MSMS, or transitions. Different mass spec methods have been developed for opiate detection. The common mass spec method, including gas chromatography, mass spec, liquid chromatography, tandem mass spec, liquid chromatography, high resolution mass spec. The workflow of mass spectrometry, including sample purification, molecule separation by chromatography, and molecule identification by mass spec. For each step, there are options according to specimen type analyte characteristics and clinical needs.
Until now, most of the mass spec based methods are lab developed tests. For example, at a San Francisco General Hospital, our toxicology lab has an LCMS method for opiate confirmation test, which can confirm and distinguish certain common opiates. And another LC high resolution method, which can screen 150 fentanyl analogs and synthetic opiates. CLSI provide guidelines for method validation of mass spec method, including C50A mass spectrometry in the clinical laboratory, C43A2 mass spectrometry in the clinical lab, C62 liquid chromatography mass spectrometry methods. In summary, the opiate family including natural semi-synthetic opiates and the fully synthetic opiates they have similar biological function, but the fully synthetic opiates are structurally different. To detect opiates, it is important to select the right specimen, right time, right analyze, and right methods. Usually, immunoassay are used for screening and the mass spec method for confirmation of presumptive positive and unexplainable negative results. Knowledge of the analytical techniques and how drugs are metabolized are essential to test selection and result interpretation. Thank you for participating in this Clinical Chemistry Training Council. Pearl of Laboratory Medicine. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.